Canadian dictator Justin Trudeau is held in very high regard by himself and a few of his closest communist friends who may or may not have reptilian bloodlines. And Trudeau is absolutely despised by the other 7.9 billion people in the world and he's earned every drip of disrespect that the people of the world have for him. So here are six facts about tyrannical Trudeau that'll make your blood boil. Number one, Trudeau admires the Chinese Communist Party, and he's dumb enough to think you're dumb enough to think that's a good thing. Because he said it out loud. There's a level of, of uh, admiration I actually have for China. Um, because their you know, basic dictatorship is allowing them uh, to actually turn their economy around on a dime. Openly admiring a dictatorship? That doesn't like give you half a clue what he's about, does it? And yes, the dictatorship has really allowed China to turn the economy around. It's also allowed them to build concentration camps and commit murderous genocide. But that was way back in the year 2022 that we're currently living in. So it doesn't really count because it's so long ago. Oh look, here's Trudeau taking a picture with a raving fan. Thank you for speaking on behalf of 7.9 billion people, good sir. Number two, Trudeau invoked the Emergencies Act, which allows him to bypass the normal democratic process. And he's using it to freeze bank accounts to harm families as a way of fascistly fighting the Canadian truckers who are trying to save their country. The federal government has invoked the Emergencies Act to supplement provincial and territorial capacity to address the blockades and occupations. The Emergencies Act is a Canadian law that can be used by the Canadian government in the event of a national emergency. Canada is indeed under a national emergency as their democracy is currently being overthrown by a communist dictatorship. So technically the Emergencies Act is being used at the right time, just in the wrong way, by the wrong side. It allows the government to do whatever they want when a critical situation threatens the safety of Canadian citizens. Now to Trudeau's credit, the Canadian truckers have indeed threatened the safety of Canadians. Here you can see the truckers committing a vile act such as kneeling in prayer. Now, what we've learned from Trudeau's leftist adrenochrome addict comrades in the past is that violence is not violence. Words are violence. And now apparently, prayer is violence too. But when Trudeau's regime inflicts violence on Canadian citizens, then that violence is not violence. More on that in a minute. And as Canadian Parliament was gonna be voting on whether or not to approve the Emergencies Act, Trudeau had this to say. I can't imagine that anyone who votes no tonight is doing anything other than indicating that they don't trust the government uh, to make uh, incredibly momentous and important decisions. Well, Justin, that's exactly what they're trying to say when they vote no, you moron. That's why you have an approval rating of 16%. People don't trust you because, well, they know what you're doing. But then, and spoiler alert, Canadian Parliament did vote to betray their country in order to stay loyal to tyrannical Trudeau as they gave him approval to fully turn their democracy into a dictatorship in a score of fascism to freedom. What a piece of shit. Number three, Trudeau's Gestapo's trampled peaceful protesters who were courageously standing for their country against a tyrannical regime that's taken over their government. But it's not as bad as it sounds. They also specifically trampled a grandmother who was using a walker. So it's, it's much worse than it sounds. Here she is in the hospital after she got trampled. Wonder why she's in the hospital. She must have got COVID. 
which she wouldn't have gotten if she just obeyed Trudeau's mandates, which are in place because he just wants to keep people safe. Let's see that video again of Trudeau's Gestapo's trampling Canadian citizens to safety. Cool. Without Trudeau, those people's safety would have been severely jeopardized without having horses crushing their rib cages. Oh, and here's a coward sworn to protect the safety of Canadian citizens who's currently hunting down Canadian citizens in the name of just following Trudeau's orders. <laughs> Ottawa's interim police chief. If you are involved in this protest, we will actively look to identify you and follow up with financial sanctions and criminal charges. Absolutely. We, we, this investigation will go on for months to come. But he's just following orders. Who can blame him? Tim Kennedy does point out that the most unconsciousable acts in human history were conducted by those just following orders. But it's not the police chief's fault because, well, He's a coward. There's nothing he could have done aside from have the courage to do the right thing. But what does Tim Kennedy know? He's just willing to put his life on the line for freedom. But the police chief is willing to sell out his citizens to keep his job. Which is more respectable. Number four, Trudeau accuses Jewish member of parliament, Melissa Lantzman, of siding with people with swastikas. Watch. Mr. Speaker, Conservative Party members can stand with people who wave swastikas. And this is how Melissa Lantzman responded. Mr. Speaker, I am a strong Jewish woman and a member of this house and a descendant of Holocaust survivors, and I have never made to, I've, it's never been singled out, and I have never been made to feel less, except for today when the Prime Minister accused me of standing with swastikas. I think he owes me an apology. I'd like an apology, and I think he owes an apology to all members of this house. But Trudeau then responded by running out of parliament rather than responding. Um, maybe he caught the virus and had to go into hiding again. Number five, Trudeau had the leader of the Canadian trucking convoy, Tamara Lynch, arrested and held without bail. On what grounds? Peacefully standing for freedom in public. Freedom is very much a violation of Trudeau's policies. Arresting a woman for not obeying the man in charge? Is that misogynistic of Trudeau? No, that's not a fair accusation. That's communistic of Trudeau. We interrupt making your blood boil about Trudeau to give you something to smile about with regard to Trudeau. Here's a picture of President Trump showing Trudeau all the respect he deserves. Well played, Mr. President. Number six, Trudeau is allegedly communist dictator Fidel Castro's son. Apparently, Trudeau's mother, Margaret, and his other alleged father, Pierre, former Canadian prime minister, were known to be swingers. And they allegedly had a swinging encounter with Fidel Castro back in 1971, which led to his mother having an ongoing affair with him, followed by Justin Trudeau being hatched from a lizard egg on December 25th, 1971. Is it a boy? Is it a girl? Oh, it's a communist. Ick. A theory says that Trudeau was purposely bred from Castro as part of the communist plot to take down North America. Well, that's just a far-fetched conspiracy theory because Canada isn't under the rule of communism. It's a democracy. Mandates? are the way to avoid further restrictions. The federal government has invoked the Emergencies Act. Oh my God. Admiration I actually have for China. Oh, well, I guess it's under communism rule with Trudeau in power. But Castro being his father is still a far-fetched idea. Just look at these pictures of Trudeau in the middle, his apparent father, Pierre, on the left, and Castro on the right. Well, I guess he resembles Castro a lot, but he resembles his father, Pierre, a lot less. Well, and his father, Pierre, was five foot eight, and Castro's six foot three, and Trudeau's six foot two. Well, I mean, that doesn't mean anything either. Trudeau probably got his height from his mother, who's five foot six. He also praised and admired the brutal communist dictator quite a bit when he said, Fidel Castro was a larger than life leader who served his people for almost half a century. 
A legendary revolutionary and orator, Mr. Castro made significant improvements to the education and healthcare of his island nation. While a controversial figure, both Mr. Castro's supporters and detractors recognize his tremendous dedication and love for the Cuban people who had a deep and lasting affection for El Comandante. They tried to flee Cuba. Oh, how Castro loved the Cuban people. Trudeau does seem to be trying to show the same kind of love to the Canadian people right now, which is not consensual love. Well, because Trudeau admires him and his love for the Cuban people so much, let's just take a look at how much Castro did love the Cuban people, as reported by townhall.com. Fidel Castro jailed and tortured political prisoners at a higher rate than Stalin during the Great Terror. He murdered more Cubans in his first three years in power than Hitler murdered Germans during his first six. Did we say he put the leader of the Canadian trucker convoy in jail yet? Oh yeah, we did. She's held without bail? Okay, we mentioned that. Cool. Fidel Castro converted a highly civilized nation with a higher standard of living than much of Europe and swamped with immigrants into a slum sewer ravaged by tropical diseases and with the highest suicide rate in the Western Hemisphere. Over 20 times as many people have died trying to escape Castro's Cuba as died trying to escape East Germany. Hmm. I wonder why they wanted to escape so bad. Maybe they didn't like being loved. But whatever, that's probably all just missing context. So I'm sure the fact checkers who are trying to erase history so we don't see it repeating itself will take care of that for us. Um, what's going on? How come they haven't put it on the video for us yet? Why wouldn't they? Oh, great, there it is. Let's move on. But before we do, here's an old picture of Margaret Trudeau, Justin, and I can't quite make out who this man in Cuba is. <laughs> With these six facts about Trudeau, if your blood boils about him, is there anything you can do to cool it down? Yes, the science shows you'll feel much better if you do something about it. That means being brave enough to do what's right. Now, holding the line to keep your freedoms is tough. But it's a hell of a lot easier than trying to regain your freedoms once you've allowed them to all be taken away from you. Hope for the freedom of Canada and the world doesn't lie with the Canadian truckers. It lies with us following their example. In other words, the cure for the conditions caused by Trudeau and people like him are for you and I to do something about it. Always letting our words and actions be in alignment with our heart and what we know is right. And when we do that, spoiler alert, freedom wins, I promise.